Hello Bob, Chris and all. Hi everybody and welcome back to Astrid Investigates. We are Flying Bridge Theatre, a bilingual company from Wales and I'm Tim Baker, one of the company's two artistic directors. Our vision and our mission is to make theatre shows and tour them around Wales, but we can't do that anymore because COVID-19 has hit us in the face and we don't know when, if ever, the world of theatre will return to normal and if it does, in what form it will take. But we've been at work in the meantime and we've been talking to the Arts Council of Wales and we've applied for some money to fund us to be innovative as they always support and in this instance to make theatre without stages. And their investment means that Welsh audiences can have material like we're presenting today to live stream to their audiences at a time when their auditoria are sadly empty. Uh, to do this we created a new concept Flying Bridge Online Repertory Company and this season we're bringing you 21 episodes of a comedy audio drama about a female gumshoe detective in an alternative Wales of the near future. Very Welsh, very deep, uh, very exciting and it's called Astrid Investigates. Each week we write, rehearse and record a new half hour audio drama and that means each of our company record from their home studios, isolated, and our technician mixes it across the internet live. So we press record at the beginning and we press stop at the end and what you receive is that and what we hear is as close to a straight through theatre show as we can get. So you've joined us today for episode five. Look out for the Welsh language episodes later this year. Each episode stands alone so don't worry if you're joining us for the first time. Both Dan Daniel Llewellyn Williams and myself, Tim Baker, we write the scripts inspired by the short stories of Alan Roderick. We're about to start, so let me introduce the company before we get underway. So broadcasting, as I said before, live from Swansea is Manon Eames. Hi Manon, the two down, sit my toe with an abertower. Oh, the toe with an abertower is always what the weather in abertower is. It's glorious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, hearing you loud and clear, that's good. Um, so we're at the mercy of the internet. Let's hope there aren't too many dropouts during the performance. Um, are you good to go, Manon? Yes, I'm good to go. Great. Dioch Manon, and live from Newport is the other actor, multifaceted, multi-award winning co-writer, Daniel Thwillian Williams. Oh, thanks, Tim. Hi. 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 Thank you very much. That's a very nice introduction. Oh, by the way. Well, I'm, yeah, go on. I was just going to say thanks for the check. So, um, <laughs> and in Mould in North Wales, we have Wills, our technician who sadly can't speak. Um, and I'm the director, Tim Baker, live from Rithin. So let's begin. Uh, this episode of Astrid Investigates is called The Stone of Stones. My heart is beating like the thump of the waves on Aberystwyth seafront. Could this be my proudest moment? Suddenly the crowd falls silent. The Estethod Pavilion is packed to the rafters. You can hear a pin drop. The announcement of who has won the poetry competition is seconds away. Vesley, and this is the gather of Lloydin Hon Eo. Dante Slow! When I've done the slow, service or squillach and ma! Won't the real Dante Slow please stand up, please stand up, please stand up? Dante Slow or Dandelion has won the chair. Welsh poets use a nom de plume or fee genu, as they say in the language of heaven, when contesting the highest poetry prize in the land. We wait, letting the spotlight search the audience. The trumpets sound once, twice, three times. Will the real Dante Lau please stand up, please stand up, please stand up? A few seconds more, just to build attention, to savour the moment. Everyone in the pavilion is wondering. Then, like sprouting bamboo, I stand. The audience go wild. Astrid, Astrid Prize, ex-rugby player, goal kicker extraordinaire, winner of the Rugby World Cup turned private detective and now leading poet of her generation in the language of heaven. 
Winner of the Bardic Chair, Erd Gadder! Song of Archiade, Ms. Astrid Price! I'm escorted by members of the Duidic Circle down to the stage and led to the shining, bright, newly carved chair. As I sit, the crowd rise to their feet and I begin to recite my winning poem, the poem to end all poems, the poem that launches a thousand kuchs. I open my mouth to speak and, and, and... Beep, 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 beep. Astrid, Astrid, wake up, wake up. Just to remind you, it's your mother's birthday. Wake up. No, no, not yet. Don't wake me yet. Not before I've remembered the poem. Get me back to my dream. Oh, damn, damn it. I roll over to my bedside table in desperation to my notepad and pencil and begin to chase the smoke of that poem away, scribbling furiously any memory of the subconscious creative genius as it slowly drains out of my lucid mind and down the plug hole of lost inspiration. Damn, damn, and triple damn. Giddy, you just killed the world's greatest poem. Would you like to send a text message to Brian? No, Gertie, I would not like to send a fucking text message to fucking Brian. Well, that's not very pleasant. I don't care if it's not very pleasant. You've ruined it. You've ruined everything. That poem was my Kublai Khan. I just won the bardic chair in the dream with that wonderful poem. But you murdered it. It's gone. Wasted. This perfect perfection. Perfundicated fuck. Are you sure you don't want to send a text message to Brian? No, just F off and die, will you? Now I know how Samuel Coleridge felt. Bollocks! Giddy, I never thought you'd be my person from Pollock, and if you don't know what that means, boogle it! I roll back into bed and make my best efforts to calm down. It wasn't Giddy's fault. I would usually leave Giddy in my car, but last night I uploaded him to my watch and brought him into the bedsit I share with my mam. Oh, poetry is a passionate pursuit, but so is justice. Oh, I was really beginning to enjoy the notoriety in that dream. At least it was a benevolent dream this time, not the usual, being rugby tackled by raving fraudsters or drooling slimy politicians or even hunted down by cheats and liars who've betrayed their partners. But my beautiful poem has gone from my memory. It followed the form and structure of the Welsh King Hannah perfectly. And oh, I guess sometimes the best bits of dreams are the most elusive. Oh, for a bit of culture in this grimy life of mine. I jump in the shower. I don't know why. It's far easier to wash when I just stand still. I briefly reflect on the fact that I, Astrid Price, live amongst the lowest in society. I'm down in the grit and the sawdust, among the disenfranchised and the disadvantaged, in my mission to do good for my fellow human. I am a private detective, a private dick. While I dry myself, I say to the lion mirror, Poet, ew, Astrid, a poet. You are not a poet, you dick. You are a dick, you dick. As I dress, my dad looks over at me from his photo on the sideboard. He's standing in a cheap suit and holding a brown paper package outside the gates of Heronsey Prison, newly released. Bless. He taught me all I know about locks, keys, security systems and alarms. Dad's mission was not to get caught, at which he spectacularly failed, and mine, well, mine, is to catch people like him, at which, in my humble opinion, I spectacularly succeed. I wonder briefly if he ever made it to Brazil with the proceeds of his ill-gotten gains, and whether he'll ever get nabbed and brought back to justice. I leave him where he is, outside the prison gates on my sideboard. Today is Mam's day, after all. She's already up and about when I appear for breakfast. Bore da mam, Pembroke happy city, Pembroke happy city, Mwah! happy birthday, mam. Oh, there's lovely Dioch Cariad, but I gotta say, I do feel my age today. No way, 25, is it, mam? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> As the rugby gods to say, time is like the great fly off. It do off fly, don't it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Life is but a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is yearned no more. What? Bloody hell, girl, you swallowed a brontosaurus. That's thesaurus, ma'am. I don't care who saw us. We was there. Oh, it's poetry, ma'am. I dreamt last night I won the Eisteddfod, the bardic chair, no less. I sometimes think I could have been a poet. Of course you could have, Cariad. Like a parrot with no teeth, you always succeed at anything you turns your hand to. 
but I'm glad you never went into Bardistry. We haven't got room for another chair in here anyway. No, ma'am, the bardic chair is... Oh, never mind. Now then, it's your day today, ma'am, so I'm not answering my phone, I promise. I'm taking the day off and we are going to have a day of days. Bit of retail and we're going to go for lunch at the Sosman Vach. Ooh, yippee! Come on, let's go. Lava bread croquettes and Welsh salt marsh lamb. Ooh, there's lovely, my favourite. As we turned to leave, I opened the front door to a door-sized bunch of flowers with a Greek nose and a black moustache peeping through. Hey, thank you, Astrid, for agorooching your Dorus. Ha ha! It was Stachis Theodorakis, the owner of the Lion Card Chip Shop downstairs, and would be lover to my mam. Branwen, penny bloid e hapis vergariad. Stachis was our landlord. The two of them were insatiable. She'd been married to the mob for 30 years before Dad up sticks to Brazil, and Stachis was basically an outrageously horny middle aged white boy fish fryer with a randy eye. Blood I, Branwen, blood I eat thee. Oh, flowers, Stachis, you sweetheart. They're lovely. You despoil me, you really do, Dialch Cariad. Hey, Astrid, my Welsh is gwella day by day, you think? I work my bollocks off, innit? I want to be true, come reigi. Chuf, chuf, san fire push gwingis go gerich windro, but san tisilio go go gooch. Hey, hey. Ooh, I love you promenading me in the language of my ancestors. Branwen, Jerry, you, my dearest, are coming eat steak with stackies at the Sospan Vachy restaurant. Sospan Vach and Beruyar a flower. Hey, hey, why you sing about a little Sospan, eh, and a big Sospan and a scramble cat? It'll make no sense, no? Huh? Well, Branwen? Beth am Danny, inne. What you say to a date? You were just a smidge late, Stachis. I'm taking Mam to the Sosman Bach for lunch, and we're having a girl's day out, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Why are you afraid? Is everything wrong? No, it's an expression, Stachis. Oh, I see. I never learned the outs and ins of your language, eh? Oh, there's no point I start learn Welsh, eh? I can't even be a master of English, innit? Of course there's a point. You're keeping the language alive, Stachis. You keep working at it. She's right, Stachis. Deval donk had a garrig. Oh, many taps breaks a stone. Never mind. Never give up. Just keep chipping away. Chips? Hey, I make the chips. No, no, it's an expression. An idiom. Who you calling an idiom? No, an idiom is a figure of speech, a meaning different to its literal meaning. Oh, okay. Like, it's raining legs off chairs, or my blood climb up my head. I see. Hey, Mrs. P, I tell you what, you make my blood climb up my head today, innit? Oh, stop it, you randy beggar. Oh, anyway, Stachis, sorry about the saucepan, Vach. Nah, Drenny, I miss the cook. But how about tonight, for supper, innit? You have adoc chips and peas here on the home. Do you mean on the house, Stachis? Exactly. Ah. Why is language so hard? Anyway, bye-bye. i see you later. Ooh, there's your phone, Cariad. Damn, it's Peter Jennings, ma'am, head of MI Chwech, top brass. Well, you answer it, love. Go on. But I promise I wouldn't. Now what? Uh... All right. Hello? Astrid, how the devil are you? Fine, Jenny. How can I help you? I need to see you. Something's come up. Important. Poisig yarn. Bit of a pickle. A hot potato. Not your usual cup of tea. This is coming right from the big cheese and could involve a bad egg. We need a smart cookie to crack a hard nut. It's not going to be a piece of cake either, Astrid. It's a job for the cream of the crop. In short, we need you to use your noodle and get us out of a sticky situation. Is that clear? As cheeky, Peter. But not today. I have a date with lava bread and salt marsh lamb. Look, this isn't just another flash in the pan. A common or garden gumshoe sleuthing assignment. 
You could save the nation's bacon, language, identity, the whole caboodle, Astrid. We need you to save our Camraig. What? In a flash, I remember my dream. A nation on his feet. Is this the call I've been waiting for? To lift me higher? To gain the kudos and recognition of my country? Peter, tell me more. Can't on the blower, old bean. Too hush-hush. Can you meet me incognito? Incognito? Incognito, undercover, in disguise. We'll have to meet privately in public, somewhere in the city centre. I do a pretty good wino, although I do say so myself. Ever fancied seeing how the other half live? Always, Peter. Down and out it is, then. Meet me on the steps of the derelict Eastgate Hotel, appropriately dressed. What do you say, in an hour? This is for the nation, you say? For Wales and the world. I'll be there. Good egg. Oh, and bring a couple of plastic flagons of that super cheap cider, will you? The blow your head off stuff. Must dash. Affirmative, Jenny. Goodbye. Ma'am, sorry, but I need it. The Independent Republic of Cymru depends on me, apparently. I heard. Off you go and do us proud, girl. I'll go to the saucepan vach with Stakis and we'll have a nice lunch and maybe a drink or three. You never know, we might come back year after for a bit of Welsh rabbit. Ah, oh, thanks, ma'am. I spring into action. An hour later and I'm in character, sprawled on the steps of the Eastgate Hotel, wearing a filthy coat and a matted wig. I don't recognise Peter at first, with his straggly beard and foul breath, but eventually he finds me. Well done, Astrid. I'm impressed. You're pretty top banana at this camouflage thing, aren't you? Thank you, Peter. It's my bread and butter. i got more personas than you've had at dinners. Now, spill the beans. Right. Let's have a swig of that cider first. Just for authenticity, of course. You never know who's watching. Ah, my, this is pretty good stuff. Right. Astrid, how's your knowledge of Welsh folklore? Pretty hit and myth, I'm afraid, Jenny. Very droll. So, I take it you've not heard of the Stone of Stones, Carig or Kerrig? A little. Tell me more. Sometimes called the Glyndur Stone. The Stone of Stones is kept in the National Library in Aberystwyth. It's very old and is said to have magic powers. It's central to the integrity of the Welsh language and we all know how important that is. Oi! Oi! Piss off, mate! That's my sleeping bag! Get, get your hands off! Get your own! Anyway... This stone, it's smooth, about the size of your fist, and recently scientists have been able to harness its powers, so now the Stone of Stones has become the central processing core of the Google Translate supercomputer at the National Library, so it's pretty important. Well, blow me down with a plien. Plien? That's a feather, isn't it? I didn't need Google Translate for that. Well done, Jenny. You'll get there with the language soon enough. Deval donka dira gareg. What's that? Many taps break the stone. Keep at it, mate. You'll get there in the end. Ah, yes. Funny you say that. That's the code name for this case. Daval Donk. Wait a minute. Isn't there some legend about the holder of the stone becoming instantly able to speak Welsh? You've got it. So it is said. That's the myth, anyway. The Stone of Stones is regarded as supremely important, given its ancestry, in many ways the emblem of a nation. But... There's another legend associated with the stone, one that's kept absolutely top secret for obvious reasons. Legend has it that if the stone should fall into dishonest hands, the Welsh language will putrefy and die through a great wave of apathy and disinterest. My God! Who knows about this second legend? Very, very few people. Inner circle of the Eisteddfod, top civil servants like myself, and now you... I mean, it's probably a load of old tosh. <laughs> like the idea that the bubonic plague was spread by fleas. Ha! <laughs> OK, anyway, Peter, can I deduce from the way you have tied that piece of string around your trousers, using it as a makeshift belt, that somebody has stolen the Stone of Stones? Precisely. Uh, excuse me, Astrid. Uh, oh, thank you, madam. Uh, that's very kind of you. You have a nice day, too. See that, Astrid? A glindour. Not a bad gig, this. Anyway, you're right. Somehow, someone has stolen the Stone of Stones. We want you to get it back. Do you have any suspicions already? 
Only the ERA, the English Reunionist Army, of course, they want nothing more than to see the Welsh language fall apart. But we've infiltrated them pretty heavily with our agents, and there's not a whisper from that direction. No, we think it's someone working alone, maybe with a grudge against the language. I'll take the case, Jenny. The Welsh language is part of who I am. I'll find the stone. Tell me, who has access to the stone normally? Well, it's kept under tight security at the National Library most of the time, but it's brought out once a year during the proclamation ceremony at the National Eisteddfod. They were the ones who discovered the real stone had been swapped for a lump of paper mache. The security system that protects it is one of the best in the world, so it could be a professional job. I see. So, who knows the real stone is missing? Top dogs in the Eisteddfod and a few boffins at the National Library. Let's keep it that way. I'll start with them. All right, but hurry. We won't be able to keep a lid on this for much longer, and if these legends are true... I get you. I'm off to ask some questions. Good. And remember to use the code name. We need to keep this hush-hush. Daval Donk. Wow! A load of old dog ends. I'm having them. Oi, oi, you! Get your, get your meat hooks off! And with that, he's gone. My next point of call is the Archdruid of Wales, head of the Gorsedd, protector of the language, David Ap Merthyn. As soon as I mention Deval Donk to him, he goes off on one. When I tell him I know about the second legend, he admits he's convinced the language decline has already begun. The Estevot is only days away and apparently he started to dream in English. And for a druid, that's pretty serious. He says his farts have even started to smell a jellied eels. David reckons it must have been a hell of a clever thief to get past the security systems. I ask him if I can spend the night in the Library of Wales, where the stone was kept. Of course, Aunt Pam. Because I does my best thinking at the scene of a crime. Nos on Gavan? Yes, the whole night. Deval Donk at Garreg. Ah, of course, Deval Donk. A chofiwch, Astrid. A gwir an erbyn a byd. Thank you, Archdderwydd. Goodbye. As I walk to my car, the archdruid's words resonate. Remember, Astrid, truth against the world. I know that to be one of the core principles of the Eisteddfod. Perhaps his words will come in handy later on. I feel a sense of pride swelling in me. If these legends are true and it's in my power to protect the Welsh language, I think it would be my greatest achievement. I was starting to like this job, the personal and professional rolled into one. I get into my trusty yellow gilbon and gun it to the next port of call, the National Library in the seaside-slash-wet boozy town of Aberystwyth. I'm shown into the room where they keep the stone of stones, now just a piece of papier-mâché in a glass case surrounded by a bewildering array of security equipment, alarms, double locks, CCTV. I sit through the night in the light of the blinking LEDs and then it hits me like something ringing a bell in my head and it's not Quasimodo. To focus my deductions, I run through my relevant Dai Chi routines. The Kervlin, or statue. The tan and a ball, or fire in the belly. And then I bring out the big guns and lower myself slowly but surely into the Carnarvon Comte, which doesn't really translate unless you're from Carnarvon. As I transcend to a higher plane, I see a hazy figure in the mist of my mind appearing. Dad! Something is drawing me to his tales of illegal exploits and the dark side, the world of safe locks, alarms, and suddenly I achieve a moment of pure clarity. I know who stole the Stone of Stones. (coughs) Hello, Peter. Astrid, this Glyndur stone myth seems to be coming true. Translation equipment is failing right across the independent Republic of Cymru. In the Senedd, nobody's wearing headphones anymore. Would you believe it? Road signs are disintegrating left, right and centre, causing horrendous traffic conditions. The set of Pobl Cwm has spontaneously combusted. Oh, and finally, I'm sorry to report, but at the rugby this afternoon, instead of the national anthem in Welsh, people were singing My Hen Lady Haddock. Tell me... Are you making progress with the case? Put it this way, I've got a hunch, Jenny, that's all, but I'm going to follow it. Do you remember the Pontypool Six? Of course, the great drain robbery. Wasn't your father one of them? Sorry, Astrid. Yes, he was, Jenny, but I need to find one of the other members of the crew. Do you remember their names? Let me think. Uh, there was 
Buster, your father, of course, Spanner Smith, Ronnie Padlock, Katie Carchase, Harry the Heist, oh, what was his name? Ah, yes, Sammy the Fingers Haggis Norton. Fingers Haggis Norton, that's the man, the safe cracker. Do you know where he is? Well, he should be behind bars, but according to our records... Ah, he was last seen jollying it up in a villa in Crete. We've got nothing on him, sadly. Too clever. But maybe I have. I need to see him. Righto. Whatever you need. Chopper's on its way. Oh, do hurry, please, Astrid. We've just heard news that Radio Cymru presenters are just blowing one continuous raspberry. This is a matter of life and language. Right you are, Peter. Leave it with me. The thud, thud, thud of the helicopter matches the thud, thud, thud of my art as the south of France spectacularly comes into view. Flying over the med, I have no time for vistas as I lose myself in police files. We touch down in the village of Episcopi and before long I find Fingers' villa. It's the one kitted out like a weatherfork's pub, of course. I scale the security fence and seconds later his guards have me pinned to the ground as I knew they would. They frisk me. I'm clean. I don't carry a shooter. Never have. Within 30 seconds, Fingers himself is staring down at me in the blazing Greek sun. Well, well, well. Who's this? Another bounty hunter. A woman this time. I tell you, you got nothing on me. You're wasting your time, English copper. I'm not a copper, and I'm not English. I'm a private detective from the Independent Republic of Cymru, and I need to speak to you, Fingers Norton. Oh, yeah? And who are you exactly? With this, he rips my wallet from my bag, and as he opens it, his face transforms. He's looking at my treasured photo of my dad. Buster Price? What have you got a picture of him for? What... Astrid. Astrid? Is that you? It's me, Fingers. I'm all grown up now. Can we speak? Leave her go, boys. What the hell are you doing on the right side of the law? Your da is such a good old bad man. How can I help you? Will you answer me a few questions? I've a case to solve. Anything for Buster's daughter. Come on in. Fingers Norton leads me to a huge patio overlooking his swimming pool. Tell me, Fingers, what do you know about the Stone of Stones? His eyes suddenly narrow for a moment. Oh, that? Only a bit of taffy mumbo-jumbo. Why? Somebody's lifted it. He gives an over-innocent shrug. Hmm. Why would somebody do that? I was hoping you might tell me, Fingers. It's got you a name all over it. You a modus. Me? Ha! You've got to be joking. I haven't left this island for 20 years. I'm a wanted man across 13 different countries. On your dad's life, it weren't me. OK, somebody else then, guided by you. Given anybody any advice recently? Taught anybody the ropes? Huh? He does shifty really well, I think to myself. There is a very, very long silence as Fingers drinks a very, very long beer. I do not relent. Give me a name. A name, Fingers. Who wanted to steal the Stone of Stones? Who, what and where for? Don't know what you're on about. All right, Fingers. I don't want to do this, but I've done a bit of work on some police files. You are implicated, but never proven guilty, in a number of spectacular jobs. The Paddington Diamond Disaster. Do I see him blink? The Post Office Payroll Heist. Do I see him twitch? The Great Drain Robbery. Not a sausage. He's good. Really good. Well... I was tried and found not guilty. You have to respect the law, Astrid. I do, but I think I found enough stuff the police missed to trigger a retrial. What? Enough to get you back behind blighty bars. But if you give me a name, I'll stay stum. Again, a long silence, but I can hear his thoughts as if he was speaking them. Then he does. You're good, Astrid. I ain't going to fit you up with a pair of concrete boots and drop you in the med out of respect for your da. But I'm afraid. Honour amongst thieves and that. Look, Fingers, this isn't just a run-of-the-mill gumshoe assignment. It's important to me. Someone has stolen the stone. 
Legend says it makes the older bilingual, so it's probably somebody desperate to speak Welsh. But, unbeknownst to them, there's another myth to do with a stone. The seal in it will destroy the language completely. What? The Welsh language is a part of me. It was a part of my dad. For the sake of your old buddy and his flesh and blood daughter, please come clean fingers of Haggis Norton. He suddenly has a far away look in his eyes, as if he sees back generations. What? The language must not die. My great great grandparents spoke Scots Gaelic, but it never passed down to me. Now that's a sad thing. All right. All right. I coached this bloke how to nick the stone, remotely, of course, on long-distance Zoom calls. He paid a lot of money, this fella, Welsh pounds. Glyndwys. And his name? Only ever one word. Pedder. He never gave no real name. Just that. Pedder. Welsh accent. Oh, and he said he was realising the dream of a lifetime or something. (laughs) By nicking an old stone? I didn't really think much of it. You were off the hook, Fingers, and I gotta go. Have a news, though, before you go. Or perhaps not. Better get that stone back, eh? <laughs> go on, Aster, get going. Within seconds, I'm in the chopper, on the way back to the Republic of Cymru. A name, a dream, and a Welsh accent. It's not much to go on. Pedder, the Welsh equivalent of Peter. Lots of Llambedders in the IRC. Peter's church. Lots of Pedders. Peter Pedders, too. And what about the Peter Pedder people probably pick? What? Oh, shut up. You're not a poet, you dick. You were a dick, you dick. That's right. I'm a private detective. Oh, come, come on, Astrid. You can solve this. As we fly over the French Riviera, I think how beautiful the med is at night. <coughs> Hello, Peter. What's going on? Astrid, are you on the way back? Did you get a lead? Anything? Only one name. That's all he had. Pedder Peter. Pedder Peter. That's two names. No, just Pedder Peter. That's what I said, Pedder Peter. No, Peter, the name is Pedder. Ah, Welsh for Peter, as in Kenin Pedder or Daffodil. I've I, I've just learned that in my most recent Welsh class. Daffodil, of course, Kenin Pedder. Peter, you were a genius. I am? Yes, Jenny, you've just given me the lead I'm looking for. Well... If you solve the case, you'll be a national hero all over again. Thanks, Jenny. I hang up and instantly go into super deduct mode. Of course, Ken and Pedder could be a fee genu, a pen name for someone who has stolen the stone in order to speak Welsh, in order to win an Esteathod competition. I call the Archdruid, David Ap Merthyn. Hello? David Ap Merthyn? David, Astrid Price. Astrid! Have you found the Stone of Stones? Hush to it. Why are you speaking English? Oh, I can't be bothered with all that Welsh crap. Oh, my God. Never in a million years would the Archdruid, protector of the language, say such a thing. This must be the apathy the legend talks about. Swing low, sweet chariot. Davis, Davis, stop. I'm hot on the trail of the stone. Tell me. Has anyone ever used the name Ken in Pedder as a pseudonym in the Eisteddfod? Yes, of course. Can you tell me Ken in Pedder's real name? No. This is a matter of life and language. Apparently, the Welsh TV channel is starting to rerun episodes of the Benny Hill Show. We don't know their real names. We never know. Entries are only ever submitted under a... Oh, what's that bloody word again? Fucker fennel or something? Feek enu. Oh, whatever. Unless somebody wins a competition, they remain anonymous. Gotta go. Diolch What? What was that? What did you say? I hang up. Suddenly, I'm hit with dread. The legend must be true if the Archdruid himself is losing his Welsh. Then I get an idea. That night, I break into the Estevard offices using all my dad's skills and look at the entries submitted over the years by Ken and Pedder. I'm looking for a lead, a hint, something that might imply who he or she is. Sitting there, reading by the light of a mini-torch, I'm shocked. Kenneth Pedder's poetry is the worst, most arcane, dismal drivel I've ever read. 
It brings tears to my eyes. It's a pretty poppycock, tripe, babble and bunkum. No wonder he or she has never won a competition. The structure stinks, the rhymes revolt, the similes squirm and the metaphors are minging. His or her attempts at alliteration are positively and pathetically puerile. So terrible, it makes me sick to read them. But no hint of who wrote them. I'm just about to give up on the whole case when my eye glances over this year's entry. And the god of bardic beauty descends from heaven. Before me is genius in the name of Kenan Pedder. So alluring and appealing, the craft takes my breath away. Such sublime mastery of language and form, the poem majestically combines soaring waves of passion within the strict metre of the Welsh poetic form, the locked, unlocking, the limitations freeing, rhyme sequence exploding with new and erotic meanings. Now I am weeping with the power of this dazzling vision. I'm jealous as hell. There's no question about it. Ken in Pedder will win the Estevot Cadad competition this year, powered by the Stone of Stones. I'm usually pretty dispassionate about the crooks and thieves I deal with on a daily basis, but I feel a tinge of sadness about Ken Impeder, who obviously doesn't know the steel in the stone means the destruction of the very language he strives to succeed in. A few days later, I am in the Estevor Pavilion. It's packed to the rafters. You can hear a pin drop. The announcement of who has won the poetry competition is seconds away. Zeshli and Nishli the Gadder of Lloydin Hornil, Kenan Pedder, when I have Kenan Pedder, Service or Squalachamba, when I have Kenan Pedder, Service, when I have Kenan Pedder, Service. A few days later, I'm once again meeting Peter Jennings, both of us disguised as two down and outs on the steps of the Eastgate Hotel. As arranged, the arch-druid, David Apmurthin, joins us. He's wearing a grimy duffel coat and has a dog on a string. There have never been scenes like it in the history of the language, Astrid, and it's all down to you. When Kenan Pedder revealed himself to the Eisteddfod audience, nobody knew that he was carrying the Stone of Stones in his pocket except for you. It was a hunch that paid off. It was a fine piece of pickpocketing from the daughter of... Buster Price. By the time Kenin Pedder reached the stage to recite his winning poem, you'd already pinched the stone and he hadn't the foggiest. He was back to being, well, how he was before, a Welsh language struggler. Fair play to him, though. He did give a good rendition of I'm a Little Teapot. And at that same moment, like a flash of lightning, a revitalising energy surged through our beloved language. So then you took to the stage, Astrid and by all accounts gave a pretty stunning rendering of how you solved this case, eh? It was poetry, pure improvised canhamed, a recital worthy of the chair itself. So, Peter, what do we know about the real Kenin Pedder? Right, well, he's John Palmer from Tonbridge Wells, bought a farm near Breckenshire, tried to learn the language but struggled over the years, didn't want to have to put the time in, so he stole the Stone of Stones and cheated his way in. But there aren't any shortcuts, are there, really? You've just got to put the work in. The Valdonk Adira Garreg. Precisely. Couldn't have put it better myself. And as for you, Astrid, you've saved a nation. My pride swells to the size of the Shirley Bassey Stadium. Oh, that reminds me, Astrid. This is for you. And David Apmurthin, Archdruid of the Nationalist Stedford, hands me an invitation to join the Circle of Bards, the Gorseth. You have to have a fee genu, a pen name. Everyone in the Circle has one. What'll yours be? I can hardly speak with emotion and pride. A dream come true. Eventually, I stutter. Well, well, I don't know how we will translate, but how about Dick of Dicks? Oh, that'll be a tough one. David? Well, uh, we'll work on it. Uh, We'll get there. As we say... Dunk, 
with Jochem Adjaun. That was episode five of Astrid Investigates, and we really hope you enjoyed it. I'm Tim Baker, the director, and we're well into this series now. We want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us each week uh, for each new episode. We're getting some really positive responses, and once again, from my point of view, uh, a very special thank you to the actors. Um, one of the things I really miss <laughs> is going to the pub after the show. Dan, I'll have a pint of lager. Do you mind? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mate, I'm about 130 miles away from you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not my round. Okay, okay, okay. I'll drink one for you then, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, God. <laughs> yeah, I would love a pint right now, by the way. Uh, cheers, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. Great. So, yeah, that was... How, how did that go, by the way, Manon? Did that go well for you? Yeah, yes, yes, fine. Yeah, lots of fun, <laughs> as usual. It's a bit frantic, but yes, no, I'm enjoying them. Yeah. I find that um, my bum muscles get a bit tired because I'm so tense as you go through, guys. You know, but uh, you know this is being recorded, it's really, mate. It's great. It's great. <clears throat> you really keep the ball in the air. It's spinning is great. I I, I want to say th uh, sorry to every Scottish person that's listening as well for my appalling Scottish accent, by the way. Yeah, you can you can apologise. <laughs> you can apologise to the Welsh people as well, Dan. Um, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm gonna. It's a thing, by the way. I apologise for my accents every week. I don't really mean it, though. I'm just doing right. it for comic effect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tim. I was going to say yeah. actually. Yeah. We haven't asked you yet. What's it like being a director on this? Because it's an unusual um, project, isn't it? Mm, all my background is in theatre, so I've been in a room with actors uh, all my life. So it's, it, I mean, you know, it's weird. It's, it's very different. Um, I'm enjoying it, but it's. It's like um, two or three of your senses being taken away because so much of the communication that's going on in the rehearsal room is visual eye contact, uh, body language, physicality, and none of that's happening. I, I'm finding that my, my ears are doing so much more work than they would normally be doing because that's all I've got to rely on. Um, it's quite thrilling and it's quite um, interesting to see how you guys improve because you get your your tongues and your your mouths around the words as we rehearse but it's very different it's very different there's one good thing about it and that's that we haven't got to watch you making notes all the time oh yeah because i'm <laughs> famous I'm not... tim baker pencil you're sort of running through a scene and you can see he's watching and then he starts scribbling something down you think oh there we are i'm in for it i've done something wrong yeah mm. <laughs> deflating very... In a darkened theatre, actors are always telling me that they can see my little pen torch go on, and they're going, oh, I know, I've said that line, I'm going to get a note on it. So I started to delay when I'd switch my torch on so they confused them, so they weren't thinking about what note I was going to give them in advance. You know, very canny. I just canny. want to come and cut in and say to, to the audience as well, like to give them a little bit of perspective of of how remote we are because to you it might really sound like we're all in the same room but we check you know like uh, for instance i'm in my my son's bedroom right now look at you know working off the desk that he does his homework on with my little home setup you know we could not be further removed from each other it's very peculiar but it's we're finding a way to enjoy it and do some hopefully enjoyable stuff so just to remind you all listening astrid investigates is a series and each episode is released weekly on Flying Bridges YouTube channel and will be available later on paid for platforms. By the way, if you've missed an episode, don't worry. Each episode is a self-contained story, so it's not in a particular sequence, but do listen on. The next episode is number six and it's called Where Are You, Max? Manon, give us a, a clue or a, a taster. Mm, well, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, really. Um, but in uh, episode six, I think Astrid reveals yet another side to her character when she's got the ability to uh, read minds and not necessarily human minds, maybe. Oh, mm -hmm. so no more. Dan? Oh, well, uh, I would say it's a very clever variation on the classic missing person story and a stretch of my vocals to the limit. But Astrid does get there in the end. <laughs> oh, intriguing, guys. Uh, let's not let anything out of the bag. So give us a blast, guys. Okay, Door opens. Here we go. You were Mrs. Ingram, you see. You were not 
Carlos Ingram's widow, are you? One and the same. Carlos Ingram, one of Wales's most notorious gangsters. I thought, do I really want to do a job for the mob? I'm sorry, Mrs Ingram, you'll have to leave. I don't get involved in taffy affairs. But I'm free since Carlos's suicide. Suicide? I thought he was found at the bottom of Llandeg Red Reservoir, wearing a pair of concrete boots. Yes, like I said, suicide. I lived in fear of Carlos. That's why I turned to Max. And thank goodness he allowed me to worship him throughout this hell. My passion for Max is the only thing that has kept me sane. And now he's gone! So who is Max? What is Max and where is Max gone? You can find out if you go to our Flying Bridge YouTube channel or visit Flying Bridge's website and get details of the ways in which you can listen to Astrid Investigates, Episode 6. What do you reckon of that? Good laugh, innit? I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. Now, for a little bit more, sort of, uh, more campaigning, I suppose, really, uh, I want to let you know again that we're Flying Bridge Theatre Limited. We're a small theatre company and we... We rely on you, our audience, to help us with marketing, also with donations and all of that sort of stuff. Our income has been severely, severely affected by the stages all closing, theatres closing everywhere. And we are now trying to continue to make drama, unique, bespoke drama that we would normally have done on a stage. We're trying to put it through these little computer thingies. And in order to do that, we need to continue our income. Uh, so there will be a donate button, hopefully somewhere, Jamie, our... Our man, he's, he's put this magic button here on this. Or if he hasn't managed to do that, if YouTube wouldn't let him do that, maybe you could go to our website and donate through our whatever scheme we're using, some sort of donate scheme. Uh, the website is www.flyingbridgetheatre.co.uk. You can also help us in marketing by talking about the show, especially if you enjoyed it. Please just tell somebody. And you can ask them to tell somebody, because word of mouth is the most potent form of marketing that we can get. So use the hashtag... Uh, talk about it on social media, send emails to your friends, just, you know, this YouTube channel, tell people about this YouTube channel and ask them to subscribe, and then ask them to ask their friends to subscribe. Also, use hashtag Astrid Investigates, go to our Facebook page, Flying Bridge Theatre Company. You can also, yeah, I suppose that's it really. Yeah, boring myself now. Okay, anyway, hopefully I'll see you next week. Cheers, everybody. Bye.